Hey, it's Maximo. Welcome to Maximo's Travels. Today, we're driving from Mooloola Bar to Fraser Island. We check in at the Kingfisher Bay Resort just south of Harvey Bay and catch a bus and ferry to Fraser Island. We have lunch while being serenaded by magpies and then catch the ferry from Riverheads to Fraser Island, otherwise known as Gari. After a smooth sailing, we land on Fraser Island and make our way to the reception of Kingfisher Bay Resort to check in. I have a refreshing ale at an absolutely fabulous beachside bar. And afterwards, we see tens of thousands of crabs at low tide on the Fraser Island seashore. We walk through the resort's bushland trails and see many different flora and fauna. I take a refreshing dip in the resort pool. We attend a very informative lecture about Fraser Island and the native flora and fauna with a fair bit of detail about the native dingo population. And we finish a perfect evening off with dinner at the local bistro. Join me. We enjoyed staying in Mooloola Bar for a couple of nights, but it was time to go to Fraser Island, now known as Gari. It was quite a long way, 224 kilometres, and it was going to take us two hours and 40 minutes without stopping. Our first destination was the Riverheads Ferry Terminal, just south of Harvey Bay. The roads there were pretty good. Most of it was a dual lane carriageway, and the weather was quite uh, changeable. We did get a few drops of rain here and there on our journey. The more north we drove, the better the weather appeared to get. The more green the natural environment appeared to be, and the less traffic was on the road. It didn't seem that long, and we were there in Riverheads. We found the car park to the ferry terminal, parked our car, and checked in. We booked our tour and accommodation directly through the Kingfisher Bay Resort. When we uh, booked it, the price was around $480 per person. That included uh, two nights accommodation, daily breakfast, return passenger ferry from Riverheads to Fraser Island and back, plus a full day ranger guided four wheel drive tour of Fraser Island. This is pretty good value. I've just checked online and this package now sells for around about $549. So that was pretty good value, I think. It was cheaper for us because I think this was the off-peak rate. I'll leave a description of the resort, uh, their website and details of the tour in the description. We parked in the shopping centre car park and went into the reception area for the Kingfisher Bay Resort. We checked in with a minimum of fuss and I securely uh, parked my car in a secure car park and we waited for the bus to take us to the ferry. We did arrive quite early so we had plenty of time to have a lunch in the cafe that was located at the back of the reception area. We all had a late lunch, tea, coffee, scones or sandwiches, gluten free in my case. We were kept entertained by the spectacular views from the balcony of the cafe as well as a family of magpies. Time passed quickly and it was soon time to catch the bus. We were catching the 1pm ferry and the approximate trip duration to Kim Fisher Bay Resort was 45 minutes, just in time to be able to check in at 2pm. The bus was pretty full, which was surprising considering that the journey was only just over a kilometre between the Kingfisher Bay reception area and the Riverheads Ferry Terminal Dock. It didn't take long for us to get there at all. The bus parked and we all got out and waited for the ferry to arrive. It cost $80 per person for a return trip to Fraser Island. Vehicles cost $123 per vehicle plus $5 per passenger. 
it's essential to book. We checked our heavy suitcases in at reception on the mainland. We headed on board with our hand luggage and made our way upstairs to the uh, upstairs cabin. It was quite a windy day. We were quite apprehensive that the journey across to Fraser Island would be quite rough, but that wasn't to be. It was relatively smooth sailing. We made ourselves comfortable in the air-conditioned inside cabin. The cabin features a small bar where you can buy alcohol, tea and coffee and light snacks and refreshments. There's also an upper deck where you're able to take great photos and videos of the surrounding landscape as well as see the cars load and unload at uh, each of the uh, ferry stops. Once the bus carrying our luggage was on board, it was time to push off towards Fraser Island. It was quite a nice 45 minute journey. As we approached Fraser Island, the winds grew calmer and the seas a lot smoother. Fraser Island is around about 12.2 kilometres from the river heads. The island is quite massive. It's over 122 kilometres long and at its widest point, it's about 22 kilometres wide. Fraser Island is officially now called Gari, the Aboriginal term for the island. And the term means paradise in the Aboriginal native language. The K is silent. Gari is the world's largest sand island. It covers an area of 184,000 hectares. Huge. You can't swim on the beaches of Gari because of jellyfish and sharks. You can, however, swim in quite a few of the freshwater lakes and creeks that are on the island. Gary is a World Heritage listed park. There's so many different uh, things to see in terms of flora and fauna. There's a number of different species of venomous spiders as well as snakes. There's sea snakes. There's frogs, lizards, geckos, you name it. There's so many animals here. It's also a home to around 150 dingoes it's a perfect opportunity to see dingoes in their native habitat. I mean, you'd think that why would anyone come here? Because of the tides and uh, the sharks and jellyfish, you can't swim in the ocean. And you've got to be very careful where you walk because of the snakes, spiders, including funnel webs, redbacks. It's a dangerous place to visit, but it's an area of outstanding natural beauty. It didn't take long for the ferry to reach Fraser Island or Gari. 
and he dropped us off onto a very long pier. We walked along the pier until we reached a quaint bar that was attached to it. As soon as we set foot on land, we were immediately attacked by sand and horse flies. So a handy tip is to uh, not leave home without some aerogard or some insect repellent. We passed the sunset bar and walked the 500 odd metres from the end of the pier to the Kingfisher Bay Resort. There's a complimentary bus available for those that uh, can't manage that walk, but uh, seeing as we sat down for a lot of the time on the car and on the ferry, we thought it best to stretch our legs and walk there. Along the way, we passed the Sandbar Bistro. This is where we were going to have dinner that evening. And it just rained and it was quite warm and humid. March is the end of the rainy season in Queensland. We continued walking along a well-maintained path to the Kingfisher Bay Resort reception building. When we reached the resort area, I was a little bit, oh, I guess, apprehensive. It didn't really look like much. It looked a bit sort of industrial. That was about to change very, very soon. The covered parking area opened up into a huge open air resort style reception and restaurant area. It was quite stunning and spectacular even though the resort was probably at least 30 to 40 years old it was very well maintained super clean and looked fantastic the resort has 152 hotel rooms more than 100 self-contained bedroom villas holiday houses for big groups three restaurants four bars and a shopping village the area is huge as you can see with the map on the screen now the resort also features a couple of pools and it's set in very tranquil, lush, subtropical rainforest. There was a bit of a queue to check in seeing as the boat had just arrived. But uh, after a short time we checked in and made our way to our hotel room accommodation. It was uh, an unusual hotel, that's for sure. Walking along these uh, gangways it sort of reminded you that you were in a, almost a ship. I will do a detailed review of this hotel and the resort complex in a video in a week or two. So we got to our room, settled in and had a bit of a rest on the back porch. This is a view overlooking a little lagoon. Very very tranquil and relaxing. After a little bit of a rest and a cup of tea, we went for a walk along the grounds of the resort complex. We got to see different lagoons and a lot of natural fauna and flora. The resort was certainly eco-friendly. It's quite big and you don't realise how many different apartments and units there are scattered along the vegetation.
We did spend a fair bit of time chasing after these crabs. Fascinating little creatures. Fascinating. We then made our way to the resort complex proper and checked out the facilities. The resort has three pool areas. One near the sandbar and two pools, one adult only, another one uh, kid friendly near the main restaurant and reception area. There's even a quaint little sandy beach that's right beside the freshwater lagoon. We continued to walk through the complex and entered the main reception area. It's quite open, airy, light filled and a very much a Polynesian feel about it. It was late afternoon, the sun was shining and the weather had warmed up quite a fair bit. It had also stopped raining so we decided to go for a swim. This is the kid friendly pool. It's quite shallow at one end and uh, becomes much deeper at the other end. And just a note, I don't believe the pool was heated at all, which made the swim quite refreshing. And this is the adults only pool, one level below the main pool area. As I said earlier, the resort's probably between 30 and 40 years old. So whilst it is uh, not that sort of modern looking, it's certainly very functional and very well maintained. It is a fantastic spot for a swim. So we dried off the pool and made our way back to our respective hotel rooms to freshen up. We were eager to see a session held by a local ranger about the native flora and fauna of Fraser Island. Because they ate a lot of sand. And sand is super bad for the guts, but when they're eating stuff off the beach, fish, carcasses and whatever else, I mean, it's a sand island. So wherever you go, you're going to be ingesting sand. It just rots away in their insides, basically. Super hard for them to digest all that and super bad for some of their vital organs. Very fast runners, and when we give our safety briefing, when we take the people up to the resort, we always mention never run from a bingo, as they can get almost 50 kilometers an hour. And our bingos here have a very unique color scheme on the island. So white feet, uh, ginger on the body, and a bit of black uh, on their back. Later that same evening, after that very informative ranger talk, we headed over to the Sandbar Bistro for dinner. Our dinner here was very casual, service was quite good, we were served very quickly and uh, the food was a reasonably good uh, standard as well as being a reasonable price. I think this is a pretty good area for families. There's a game room as well as a pool being right adjacent to the bistro. And as the name Bistro implies, both food and drink need to be ordered at the bar. We were surprised at actually how few people were here at the Bistro that night. Before long, our food came. I had a very nice glass of Pinot or two to accompany my steak. I think it was a rump steak cooked to perfection with chips and salad on the side. Joe had a vegetarian risotto dish. That was also very nice. There isn't daylight savings in Queensland, so it gets dark reasonably early. It's dark by about 7 p.m. And the paths around the resort were quite dark. We did make our way to our room and sat on the balcony, sat in the dark and just listened to all the sounds of nature. This is a fabulous first day at Fraser Island, Olgari. I do hope you've liked this video. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. And hit that notify bell to be notified of all my future videos. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying me a coffee. Until our next adventure from Fraser Island, you take care and bye now.